special and near and dear to my heart. Um, we are going to be recreating the resurrection scene, the resurrection scene. And let's switch that. And I'm so excited because this is this this kind of represents everything that um, it's it's the core of who I am, you know, as uh, as a believer and as uh, a minister, a licensed ordained minister. God has been so good to us. And when coming up with the idea of what to actually draw on the scene, um, I didn't want to do anything bunnies or eggs, you know, the 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 common the common totems that we that we often associate with Easter. Uh, what I really wanted to do was I wanted I, I wanted to to give the children access to a scene that really represented what Easter is about, and it's about the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so we just have some new uh, guests joining us today. Uh, as soon as they get set up, we're going to make some introductions of all the Kapow kids and our guests that are joining us today. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to I'd like to offer an apology apparently on my website uh, and there's no one else to blame but me because I put it together rather quickly and did not fully understand everything that I was doing but apparently the be uh, join us live button as a guest was not working properly and that's completely on me I will have it fixed by this weekend uh, in time for the next live stream next Tuesday at 2 uh, p.m. Central Standard Time uh, for the next installment of Kapow Kid Zone. And so if you're having trouble and you want your child to be a guest with us here live in our virtual studio, feel free to email me at kapowschool at gmail.com. All right. Or you can uh, reach me through any of my social media um, accounts at Kapow School. I'm highly responsive. I respond to everyone. I even even on Instagram, I, I try to greet and, and thank everyone who actually supports me on Instagram. And so um, if you contact me, reach out to me and you would like your child to be a guest here in the kid zone, uh, please contact me via social media on Facebook, Instagram. I'm not that active on Twitter, but wherever. Okay. Or email me at kapowschool at gmail.com. And I will make, I will do my best to make it happen. On that note, Starting next week, I'll be using a, a different streaming platform, uh, something that seems a little bit more intuitive, intuitive, but as a result, will allow for fewer live virtual guests, okay? But still, we're going to have fun. Uh, I want to create a good experience. You can join us live. If you can't join us live, actually, in the virtual studio, join along with us when we live stream. Watch the replays. You can go to our, my website at kapowschool.com forward slash kidzone, and you can download the image of the day along with uh, a, a, a wide variety of other Kapow color buddies um, that you can color along with us. You can trace, you know, this is up there right now. The one we're working on today is up there right now. And so visit kapowschool.com forward slash kidzone and download the image of the day. And also it's posted every day. Okay. But right before we draw it, it's actually up there prior to then. So you can download, you can be ready so that when we go live, you can jump right in with us. And so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and welcome the Kapow kids that are actually in studio with us today. Uh, someone showed up, but, but left, but that's okay. We're going to, we're going to have a great time. We're going to have a great time. I'm, I'm excited about this. This is all in celebration of Easter Sunday. And so what we're going to do is we're going to bring in, we're going to bring in our Kapow kids from Michigan, the Bradfords. Bradford from Michigan. Hey, y'all. Hey, hey, hey. How's everybody doing on today? How's everybody doing? Yes, yes, yes. I'm so excited you guys are here with us today. And and who can tell me? Who can tell me what Easter is about? Uh, tell everybody. Everybody's watching you right now. Tell us what Easter is about. Uh, huh? Jesus died for us. He died for our sins, and what happened on Easter? What actually he happened? Rose again. He rose again, and that's what we're drawing today. We yeah. are drawing. Yeah. Uh, and he painted it on him. We are about to. Oh, we have a new Kapow Kid Zone kid today, and in, in today we have. We're gonna we're gonna get them on the screen. Mom, get ready to introduce. I see he has my. He's wearing my favorite, my absolute. Favorite version of Spider-Man. Okay. Just so you know, Miles Morales is my favorite Spider-Man. I even think I have a drawing here that I did just recently. Oh, there's one right there. Let me show before we bring him on the screen. 
There's Miles Morales right there that I drew, right? On the red paper. And I think I have another one. I think I have another one, a bigger one. There he is right there. Miles Morales, Spider-Man. And so we have got to bring this Kapow Kid into the studios with us. Give us your name, your first name, and tell us where you're from, Spider-Man. Hold on just a moment while I bring you in. I am from uh, Alabama. And What's your name? My name. Your name? first name? My name is Alexander. Alexander. Alexander, that costume is cool. <laughs> I love it. Did you see Into the Spider-Verse by any chance? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. I have seen it a lot. You've I seen it a lot? Yes, yes, sir. And I got it for my birthday on March 10th. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. You, your parents must be the absolute coolest. Well, we're so glad that Alexander is joining us here from Alabama in his Miles Morales Spider-Man. And that is just so cool. I mean, you kind of made my day. That is literally, I, I, I was not a Spider-Man fan until Miles Morales. That's the truth. And I've worked for Marvel. I've done cards for Marvel. And Spider-Man did not become cool until he became Miles Morales. So thank you so much. We're happy that you can join us on today. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started on today's drawing. And if you are joining us, wherever you're from, you're just joining us, go over to kapowschool.com, Kid Zone. You see it right there on the screen. And you can download this image right now. You can color along with us, okay? And believe it or not, as we start drawing this, I'm going to make a couple of, a couple of subtle changes um, that kind of escaped me earlier today when I was when I was actually drawing this in in real time, okay? And hey, that's the thing about art. You can always go back and you can make corrections, right? And so that's what we're gonna do. We're going to make a few corrections. Let me adjust my camera here so you guys can see me good. There we go. So when I'm facing that way, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started on resurrection illustration. All right. All right, the resurrection scene. All right, so as you guys know, we always start off with our handy dandy pencil. Woohoo! Now, this is just a pencil. Do not get distracted by how it looks. Okay. What makes the pencil is what's in the middle, and that's a regular pencil lid. Okay. This is just something that we artists use so we don't have to sharpen it too much. All right. Because time is always an issue with us uh, as professionals, and it kind of takes time to sharpen pencils and when you're doing it for 8, 10, 12, 16 hours a day, a lot of times that, that, can, that can turn into hours just sharpening the pencil. So you don't have to waste time. So don't get distracted. This is just a pencil. That's it. Just a pencil. All right. So what we're going to start off with in this scene, we're going to start off with the big hill in the front. Okay. We're going to start with the big hill in the front. And we start off with that because it takes up the most room on the page. So we're, notice we're turning our page sideways today. Right. We're making what's called a landscape scene, okay? Landscape. You know, whenever you join us on the Kids Zone, we always try to introduce some new language, some new verbiage, right, that you can take and you can use. Last week, we learned tangent. We learned silhouette. Um, we learned underdrawing, okay? And we're going to use – and these are things that we use all the time in art. We use all the time. And unfortunately, I told on myself last week. I didn't learn many of these things until I got much older because I didn't go to art school. I taught myself how to draw, right? And so had I learned some of these things earlier, and I probably would be a lot further along than I am today, even though I'm doing okay, right? But I want to give you guys the head start that I didn't have, and that's in learning the words behind what you're doing. And so what we're starting right now, we're starting off with this big hill right here, this big hill, okay? Big hill. Now, first, if you notice what I'm going to do first, I'm going to lay down the ground. We're going to lay down the ground. And so if you look at my paper, I'm going to start here at the bottom of the paper, and I'm going to go up just a little bit. Look at my ugly mug off the screen. Okay, so you can see the full drawing. And I'm going to go up to about here, right? And I'm going to start up here. I'm just going to make a line straight across. Straight across. Don't worry if it's not perfectly straight. We're not looking for perfection. We're looking for readability, right? One thing about art is it's all about... Can people tell what's going on? 
when they look at your picture, they should be able to tell everything that's going on in your picture. Okay. And so we're going to start off with the ground. Okay. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with the hill. And we have this big hill in front. Since it's taking up the most room. We want to make sure that we put it where it's supposed to go because everything's happening is based on what's happening with this hill. So we start here at the ground and I'm, I'm drawing all the way up. So about there, right there, I'm leaving, I'm leaving almost the same space at the top as I am at the bottom. Okay. So I'll go here and I draw a nice light line all the way up there. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the tree. Okay, so the tree is right over in this corner right here. We see it right here in the original drawing, right? And so I want the tree to start right over here. The tree is there, but it's not that important, which is why it's cut off. Okay, it's there just to kind of establish that we're in some place that is full of life, that's green. Okay, so there's the, the trunk of the tree, right? And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a little branch there. And you can make your branch any way you want to. This is not about doing everything exactly like I'm doing it. This is about finding your creative voice. That's it. Finding your creative voice. When I was growing up, I always tried to draw like somebody else. And that's okay because that's how I learned. I, I would just imitate what other artists did. But as I got older, I realized that I have to find my own voice. And so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to find our own voice. So I'm sitting here making a couple of little W's like that. And those represent leaves. Right, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fill the tree in right here. This little bouncy lines, almost like clouds. If you notice, when we look at trees, we see them in what we call mass, right? When we look at them, our brain takes in the whole shape, right? And then we get, then we start to take in details. And so we have the tree trunk here, boom, right? We have the leaves up here and the branches, and we have one little branch. We can tell that's a tree, okay? So now from that tree, I'm going to draw this other hill right here, right? I'm going to take this and I'm going to draw, draw it all the way down. That's a hill in the background, right? And then I'm going to take my pencil. I'm going to draw another hill all the way in the back. And that's where our crosses are going to go. That's where Mount Calvary is, okay? And see, now already we're laying out the important shapes in our drawing, okay? So now what I want to do, remember, we're drawing very lightly right now. We're drawing lightly right now because what we want to do is we want to be able to go back and clean this up once we have everything in place where it's supposed to be. We want to be able to go and clean this up, and then we start with our hard lines, right? Then we start adding our hard lines. But right now, we're holding our pencil very lightly, very lightly. See, two fingers, so I can't put too much uh, strength behind it. I can't put a lot of force. Two fingers, and it's very light, and I'm just letting it touch the paper. I'm not pushing down, I'm not pressing. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add Mary Magdalene. And we're gonna start off with this shape right here, really simple, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and make a cone. We're gonna stop right there and see how, how all my lines are crossing. We actually want that because we want her to fit in space the right way, okay? We want her to fit in space. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to go back and I'm gonna make Mary a little bit smaller because I made her a giant. And see, I always keep my pencil, my eraser on hand. If you have an eraser at the end of your pencil, great. That's the one downside to these types of pencils is that they don't come with their own erasers. I'm gonna make Mary a little bit smaller. I'm gonna put her down here, right? So I'm gonna make a circle for her head. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make a cone for her body like that. Circle for the head, cone for the body. There we go. Now I'm gonna take here and I'm gonna make a sleeve. It's like a triangle. Curve it up. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Sleeve, curve up. Really simple shapes, right? Really simple shapes. Okay. Now mind you, we're not worried about details, right? Put this line back. We're not really worried about a lot of details. Not at this moment. Okay. Right now we're just getting our shapes down. All right, we want, we're looking at what we call the big picture in art. This is called the big picture. All right, so now the next biggest thing that I want to put in place so I don't, I don't, you know, I don't focus on too many details, we want to put this big round stone, right? The stone that was guarding his entrance. And I'm hoping that by the time we're done with this, somebody out there, one of the Kapow kids will be able to actually tell me the story of the resurrection, okay? 
So if you guys need to ask mom and dad to tell you the story that we're drawing, the scene that we're drawing, I suggest you get, get to ask him. And so now we're going to, we're drawing our circle. The beautiful thing about the stone that it doesn't have to be perfect because it's a stone and it's not perfectly round. It's got dents and ridges and bumps and cracks, right? And so I'm holding very lightly and see my, my, my hand is still barely holding on to the pencil and I'm moving at my elbow. This is so the line I'm drawing is gonna be very light so I can erase it away later. So we're doing our circle and now we're gonna do our square, our, our square for the entrance. So we come down, up and down and we go across over to the stone. So now we have our door to the tomb. We have our door. And if you see what I did right here, actually this is not on the color buddy, I added this later. I added a little um, lid to the top of the tomb, kind of make it look more like a like a, something that was man-made. So what I do right now is I do another rectangle and I'm stopping right there at the stone. Okay, we got all our basic shapes in place. And now I'm gonna put another rectangle inside we're kind of crossing that line a little bit here. Boom, and that's another rectangle. Real easy. And we put another rectangle on top of that one. What we learned last week, and I'll, 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 be re, I'll reiterate this, I'll repeat it oftentimes so you guys can, can kind of get it locked in, is that drawing lines is fine. There are a lot of great YouTube channels on here that start you off with line drawing. Drawing lines is fine. That's how I learned how to draw, right? I learned how to draw using very basic lines, okay? But as I got older, um, my drawing started to fall apart because I didn't see the shapes that those lines were composed of. So as a professional, I learned it's best to learn the shapes that things are made of and then put the lines around it, all right? It's like working from the inside out. It's almost like if, you're, if you took your bones out of your body, right, you'd have no shape, right? You need your bones for your body to get wrapped around. And so since we're building these characters ourselves, we have to give them the bones, the shapes that make them what they are. Okay, you can go ahead and draw with your lines and you can get some really great drawings and some great tutorials out there that show you how to do that. But as you, become more advanced in your art, you're gonna find yourself reverting back to shape language, okay? And so we're focusing on shape language from Jump Street. So you guys have a head start, all right? A head start I didn't have. All right, so we have rectangle, rectangle, and we're gonna put a little rectangle at the top, and that's gonna be his robes, his clothes. Because if you remember the story from the Bible, when she walked into the tomb, when she walked into the tomb, his clothes were folded, right? They were folded neatly in place it so neatly in place and 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 it was like i'm out deuces okay <laughs> so anyway we have the little rectangle on top of a bigger rectangle on top of a bigger rectangle we have our big circle for our stone door okay and let's go ahead and let's let's add our our circle for the for the uh i don't know you guys tell me do you want the sun or the moon i believe this happened they said the next day. I don't know if it happened day or night, but we're gonna go ahead and we start right here, right? We're gonna have our, our celestial body. <laughs> Sun or moon, you make it what you want. How you color it, that's completely up to you, okay? And now I'm gonna add my crosses at the top. Man, my crosses at the top, right up here. And after I add my crosses, we're gonna touch bases with all the Kapow kids that are with us in studio today. We're gonna touch bases and we're gonna see where everybody is with their drawing. Soon as I add these crosses, I want them right in front of the sun where they form. The word that we learned last week was a silhouette, the outline. And one of the most famous silhouettes ever is the cross. If you see a shadow, if everyone who sees the cross, most people know what it is when they see it. Doesn't matter how far away it is. That means it's silhouette, it's strong, and simple and easy to read. And it has become the symbol of great peace and comfort for me and millions of other people all around the world. Okay, so now there we go. We have our crosses, 
We have our sun or moon. We have one hill, two hill, three hills. We have our stone door shape. We have our um, stone bed that was actually inside the tomb. We have Mary right here. We have our tree. And we are going to check in with all the Kapow kids. We're going to check in first with Michigan, our Kapow kids from Michigan. I want you guys to hold up your drawing so we can see what you guys got. Ooh, I like it. I like it. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Look at what you got going on there. Woohoo. Okay, let's who else? Who's whose is that? Is that Havens? Yes. We got Chloe and Haven. Yeah. We don't have Josiah. Yeah. Josiah didn't join us today. Just know he's no. not joining us. Okay, all right. So you guys are great. You guys are great filling in for him. All right, we got some good drawings. Do we still have Alexander from, from Alabama? Do we have Miles Morales? Is he still there? I don't know if he's still there or not. Good job. Good job. Good job. All right, so we're going to continue. I don't know if Alexander's still with us or not, but we're going to keep going. All right, so picking up my pencil again. Woohoo! Here we go. Now we're going to add our we're going to add our bushes in the back. I just put those bushes in there because it gives you something to color and it adds a little bit of interest there. Okay, it lets you know that wherever he, wherever we are right now, the garden. All right, it's it's green, it's lush, and and things are growing because this is an image about life, not death. And so we're going to add our bushes right up here in a corner. And just like our tree, we just kind of have some upside down M's, almost like clouds. You're going to be able to color those whatever color you like. Just like that. Okay. And now I'm going to add our, my angel buddy at the top. Because when she went to the tomb, she was greeted by an angel who said, he's not here. Why are you looking for the living among the dead. I'm trying to very basic shapes. Very basic shapes. Nice little circle for his head, upside down you. And I go ahead and I add his hair. Got to add his hair. There we go. And we egg him his little eyes. And we get a smile. Can see that? All right. We do a little curve right here to show his hands. We're going to add his wings and we do a curvy, curvy line and down. Curvy line and down. Just like that. Curvy line down. And we draw one feather, two feathers, three feathers, however many feathers you want. Feathers down there and he's got two, two big wings. And I put a little halo here at the top. Just like that. These are all the traditional symbolisms that we can easily recognize and identify him as an angel. I like his belt. And I gave this little design on his sleeves, a little line right there to show he has sleeves and cuffs. And I put an opening into his robe right there, a little line right there for his robe. And so basically now we got everything down. We've got everything down. Now here's what I want to do that's different from this drawing. If you guys are still with me, what I'm doing different from this one is Guess what? The problem with this is that you can't see Mary's face. And that was a mistake on my part. I want to show her face and I want to show her happy. So I'm going to take this circle right here and I'm going to cut it in half just like that. I'm going to add some lines right here. And I'm going to give her some eyes, give her a nose and give her a smile. And there we go. We got Mary. She's looking up. And she's wearing a hood. We're going to give a little thing for her hair. We're going to go ahead and add her sash right here. And her little hand as well. So now we got Mary looking up at the angel. Angel looking down at Mary. And we have the empty tomb. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a little dimension to the, to the tomb. So I'm going to add a little line right here. I'm going to stop shorter than this line, right? And I'm going to get a little angle right there. And that shows like you're walking through a door. And I'm going to do the same thing here 
on the roof. I'm gonna draw another small line here, on top right there. Then I'm gonna short of this line right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and connect these things. So now it looks like the roof of the tomb. Okay. And here I'm gonna add just a little line here to show that it's shaped like a cube. And I'm gonna add a little line here. I'm going to go ahead and angle that off just like that. Everything looks like it has some shape to it. And we're going to have to add shape to our, our big old wall door right here. Okay. And I'm doing like a big C inside of it. A big C. So now you have, you have the shape of the round stone that covered up the tomb. I think we're just about ready. We're just about ready to start adding some details here. And we are making great time. We're making great time. Might have time. See if I have time to start to color with you guys in a little bit. That's always a treat. That is always a treat. Yeah. So here we go. I'm going to start adding our lines to our picture so we can clearly define our shapes. And we're going to start outlining Mary. You're going to see I'm going to jump around a lot here. Her little sash going up to her head. I'm going to add some wrinkles to her robe and her hands. Good stuff. Good stuff. There we go. We're going to go ahead and start adding our heel. Nice smooth line up there, right? We're going to add hill number two. And then we're going to add hill number three. I'm going to go ahead and darken in my crosses right now. Just like that. There you go. I don't know if Alexander's still with us. He's, it doesn't look like his camera is up. Our, our, our Spider-Man superhero that you missed today. In the coolest costume ever. But I'm glad you came in and hung out with us anyway. There we go. And now I'm going to go ahead and start adding the tree. So I'm taking this line all the way down here. And I'm kind of curving it at the bottom. Right, because the base of the tree is usually wider than the top. And I'm gonna take this line up here and I'm gonna go ahead and add the branches to go up in the leaves. Then I'm gonna add some leaves here. They almost look like clouds, but when you color them, color your leaves, whatever. I like I like my leaves to be green or orange. Uh, one of my favorite times is fall. And so we're just adding our little bumps to represent our leaves. And we'll just add a few more in here to kind of show how they're all over the place. Leaves, beautiful leaves. There we go. And now we got our tree. We got our tree. And so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to start adding the ground. And so what I did here on the ground where this line is, I just started adding little, little lines to represent grass. Right? That's it. It's grass. I put a little here. I put a little right here where she was standing. So she's standing in the grass. See how it start, all starts to come together when you start connecting all the dots and all the lines? Everything comes together. And the tree sits in the grass too, right? So we got to add a little bit of grass for the tree. Here we go. Good stuff. Now we're going to go ahead and add the roof to our tomb. 
adding the root to our tomb, just like that. We're just going over those light lines that we lay down and we're tracing them. Really easy peasy. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to do this rectangle down here. Because that's the one that's inside the tomb where he was. He is no longer. All these lines here, and then here are his clothes that were folded neatly in the tomb. The line there, and that looks kind of looks like clothes. There we go. Good stuff. Good stuff. You guys still with me? Let's check on our our, our Michigan Kapow Kapow kids. You guys okay? Let's see where you guys are at. Oh, what are we crying for? There's no crying in Kapow School Haven. Let me see your drawing. Let me see your drawing. All right, Chloe, let me see your drawing. Huh? Sad. Oh, I love it. I love it. Ooh. Let me see yours, Haven. You're doing fine. You're doing great, Haven. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. You're doing such a good job. Such a good job. Okay, let's get back to drawing. All right. So, you know, Kapow kids, you know, they're kids. <laughs> what was that, Tom Hanks? There's no crying in baseball. There's no crying in Kapow school. <laughs> so now we're going to go ahead and do our stone. I'm just going to go ahead and trace those lines that we put down earlier. Like that. Just kind of give our stone some shape. And come back around. Right? And I, I, I really like giving things what I call texture, right? So that we know that it's a stone. So you can start adding your little cracks, right? Like that. Boom. And just almost kind of just like letting your, your uh, pencil or your pen just kind of go over the top, kind of random. Looks like cracks, right? And then I do some going in the opposite direction to kind of give it shape like that, right? It's got in a little shadow here at the bottom. So we know that's the bottom of it. It's not getting a lot of light. Just like that. There we go. That's it. And ooh, instant rock. Just that simple. See? all about making your artwork readable so that other people can tell what it is. That's it. Because if people can't tell what it is and only you know what it is, then, you know, that's kind of tough. I put a little line here to show the inside of the tomb. Okay. Oh, we almost forgot about our, our sun or our moon, wherever we decided that's going to be in the background. It's giving a silhouette to the crosses. There we go. Right we're all here. I'm going to add our bushes. I'm going to add our bushes up here, right? And you kind of overlap some, some in front, some behind, right? Kind of like our mountains are. Then we're going to add Mary's head. So her, her head right there, her hair, her nose, her mouth, her smile. And she's happy. Little eye right there, little eyebrow. There's Mary looking up at the angel. Happy to see him. Happy to hear the good news that Jesus is not dead in the tomb, that he is risen. Okay? And so now we're going to add our angel here. We're almost done. I'm just going over the lines that I put down before. Line there, going up almost like a, a V. Making it cycle down by the side. Just like that. And then the wings up down and up and back down. Nice little curve, almost like a roller coaster. Little use for steps. 
And we're going to go ahead and put some more up here. And we're going to go ahead, we're going to add his belt. Down just like that. Little collar. Draw his happy little face. Whatever hair you like, and a smile. And then we got his halo at the top. His little halo at the top, so we know that's an angel. If the wings didn't give it away, now we know. Beans. They almost like beans. They're actual footprints. Just like that. Now it's almost like he walked out, which is what he did. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add some, some black here to kind of give a little bit of depth so you can tell that it's inside because it's darker on the inside because there's really no light going in there. And this is starting to dry out, but that's a good because now it gives us some really good texture. That's an old artist tool technique that we use. We actually... We, we, we're not quick to throw out pens and markers when they dry out because we get some really cool effects like that where it looks like a shadow and it gets kind of lighter, right? And I actually, I just like that, okay? Now I'm gonna put a little shadow behind here. Just a little bit. Show that it's behind the stone. It makes the stone, it pushes the stone forward so everything doesn't look flat. I'm going to add more grass down here. Grass, stone, and grass. Grass everywhere, little upside down Bs and Ws, little lines here. And boom, magic grass. Add a little couple of cracks in the door because I believe it's made out of stone too. And right now, all we're doing is just adding details. We always, you notice we always do the details last because we don't, we, we don't want to get stuck in them. You know, a lot of times we're very much in a rush to draw the details because the details are the fun part. Well, in your age, the fun part. When you've been doing it a long time, they become less fun. <laughs> Trust me. And now we're going to add wood to the tree. So it looks like little lines to make it look like wood. Just like that. And now that kind of looks like a tree. And that's it. We have our scene. We have our Mary. She's happy that she sees, Jesus, sees the angel that Jesus, the angel is telling her that Jesus is risen. Why are you here? Why do you seek the living among the dead? One of my favorite lines in the Bible. And there we are. We have our drawing of our resurrection scene. Drawing of our resurrection scene. I'm so excited. Oh, well, first, I'm going to go ahead and erase all those lines that I told you about that we don't need. And I'm using my big eraser to kind of get rid of them. There's my big eraser right there. Right. And I wonder if somebody can tell me out there, what is the last thing that we do when we finish our artwork? What does every artist do to let the world know that they're finished? Boy. What do we do, Haven? Huh? What's the last thing we do with our artwork to let everyone know that we're finished? What do we do? Color. Um, color. And then so, to, no, to, you, you can color. Well, you can color. Yeah. What? What? But what do we do? What do we do to let people know that we're done? Um, say goodbye. We say sign goodbye. it. We don't huh? say goodbye. We sign it. We put our name on it. Sign it. We sign it. Sign our name. Sign our Be name on it. So everyone knows who did it. Who created this beautiful work of art? Oh, I did it a fancy way. 
you guys did a good job. Let me see. Let me let me see your pictures. Hold up your pictures. Let me. See. Oh, we have Alexander back. Alexander's back. Hopefully. Let us see what you got. Oh, that looks great. Look at the footprint. Oh my goodness. Look at Mary. Oh my God. That is an incredible stone that you drew. Oh my gosh. I'm so impressed. I'm so impressed. Alexander, are you ready? Are you back with us? Huh? Are you back with us? Are you ready to show us your art? Yeah. All right, let's see. Let's let's see Alexander's. Let's see. Oh, what well, that? That is awesome. That is awesome. You have to make sure that you have mom take a photo of that and email it to me. So, because this weekend I'm putting up an art gallery so everybody yes. can see your artwork. That is outstanding, yes. Alex. I'm so yes. glad this on today. That is outstanding. And that Spider Man outfit is the beast. I'm telling you, you're going to make me go out and buy one. Okay. You're gonna make an old grandpa dress up like Spider Man because I'm kind of jealous right now. I love it. Good job, Alexander. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I love it. I love it. Now, for all of you out there who joined us, thank you guys so much. Listen, if you'd like your child to come join us uh, in our virtual studio, we know that everyone's kind of locked in right now, and uh, the world is a very, very different place than it was just a month ago, and that's why I'm doing this. Um, a little bit about myself. I am a professional artist and animator. I have worked for some of the big companies that you may recognize, um, but this is about the kids, right? This is not about money. This is not about... Uh, growing an audience. Um, this is really about giving our kids an outlet and my humble way of contributing and hopefully relieving a, a little bit of stress from mom and dad, you know, during this very stressful time and allowing our children who can't venture out like they used to and run and play and, and interact, giving them a, a chance and an outlet uh, for their creative energy. And so I'm glad you guys joined us. Um, be, be sure to check me out on all my social media and Instagram, Facebook. I'm very responsive. Um, like I said earlier, I apologize for all of those who wanted to join and the button was not working on my site. And I found that out today. Tr rest assured that will be corrected uh, before our next stream next Tuesday at 2 p.m. It will be corrected. Please share, invite, tell, tell your friends and family to follow and join the fun. All these are downloadable uh, on the website at kapowschool.com forward slash kids And if you have more mature art artists or aspiring artists, trust me, um, I go deep in the art world and I will be live sharing some of my personal works from my own faith inspired studio called Honor Studios. It's kind of like a Christian version of Marvel, right? As well as some commissions and assignments that are just fun. Shazam, Flash. I like drawing all the geek stuff, video game stuff. I worked in the video game industry. I do all of that. But this right here is for our kids, right? This is, I'm trying to create age appropriate, relevant lessons. They, they can learn something each time they come, right? Each time they come. It's not just about drawing lines and connecting dots. It's about learning the basic fundamentals of art, right? To help supplement whatever program you may be having your kid in. I know a lot of us now are doing at uh, homeschool and e-learning as well as uh, remote learning. And uh, the arts now are more relevant than ever. You know, they're more relevant than ever. So we want you to tell your friends, tell your loved ones, email me, contact me. I'd love to have you guys next week and enjoy your weekend. Enjoy Easter with your loved ones. I know that this is an ideal Easter, but it's the one that we have, and we can still praise and worship God in our way and in our own home. And be grateful for the gift of the Son that He sent that gave His life and rose again on the third day for us. It's not about rabbits. Sorry. I hate to bust bubbles. It's not about eggs. Those things are great. I did them as a kid. It really is about the gift that Christ that God gave us in the Son Jesus Christ. And that's what this scene represents. It represents his resurrection and the joy and love that it represented. And so we're going to bring all our Kapow kids back in to say goodbye. We're going to bring in Alexander from Alabama. We're going to bring in Haven and Chloe from Michigan. And we're going to say goodbye to everyone out there who joined us. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. I am your host, Solo, and this has been another Kapow Kid. Thank you. God bless you. Remember, we're all in this together. So let's stay together. God bless. Bye-bye.